How funny was that Todd tweet? Uh, that was I, awesome. Just like, amazing. The fact that Nickelback responded to that tweet is incredible. The greatest thing ever. And did they really? Todd, I didn't see that. You know, they Todd's going to be like backstage at a concert in a couple of years. <laughs> there you go, guys. If you got any any uh, new bands you want to see, maybe we should just do things like that sometimes. That's right. <laughs> There's social media managers. It's all about the perks, guys. Like I've been are. wearing Lululemon every day, hoping that somebody <laughs> sees this. Come on, guys. Come on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a Friday edition, living room edition of Baseball Night in New York. Brought to you by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers, Doug Williams alongside Andy Martino, Anthony Recker, Steve Gelbs. Three guests on the show today, which means lineup card time. Always entertaining, always gets a little bit weird. Who should I start with here? We'll start with Andy. We'll see how he leads off here. Whether he leads off is his decision, though. One through nine, Andy, give me a number. I'm accused of being a contrarian, so I'm going to not be a contrarian and just lead off with one. Like okay. A- Actually, it's a good one for you to get because there's no if in this case. You are homeschooling. So right. if you were a homeschooling teacher, what subject would you teach? So if you were a specialist in one of the, t- the, the subjects you're currently teaching, what do you think you're best at? Uh, English, no question, which would make sense given my profession. But I got a seven-year-old through an abridged reading of – Romeo and Juliet yesterday. Actually got a little Shakespeare into the house. He understood what was going on. He took some notes, answered some quiz questions. So I have to hand it to myself for, for clearing that bar here. At That's the a dark story for a seven thing years, I have isn't no, it? It is. No idea. Very Shakespeare dark. is dark. Um, it was Andy, dark. What are, what are the quiz consequences? So if you give a Romeo and Juliet quiz to your child, like, and he does badly, what, what happens next? He has to take a shot of vodka. <laughs> Anthony, I'll take, you know what? Let's just go, in. I'm gonna take number two. I'm just gonna go in order here. Oh, okay. Um, who is one famous personality you'd like to have a drink with? <laughs> Let's go with, you know, I've always actually liked watching, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Should know his name. I mean, yeah, I know. Uh, if he's you're on gonna Sports get a- Center late at night. Um, Scott Van Pelt? Scott, Scott Van, Van, Pelt. Van Pelt, thank you, yeah. Yeah, I've always liked watching him. Seems like a funny guy. Seems like the type of guy I'd like to have a drink with and just talk sports with or something, anything. He seems like a pretty intelligent guy. Seems like you could have some pretty good uh, intellectual conversation with him as well. Steve? Um, I very easily give in to peer pressure, so I don't want to buck the trend here. Let's just go with three. What are your thoughts on Major League Baseball considering Grapefruit and Cactus League's realignment for 2020? Um, I think that... Again, all of these things have, have so many logistical issues, and I find it difficult to believe that that any of these plans that have put forth been put forth so far uh, can actually logistically take place. But I will say this from a Mets perspective, I was looking at the realignment this morning. <laughs> if the if the the Grapefruit League, Cactus League, new divisions do take place, and somehow the Mets get a worse division than they have with the traditional NL East. You're swapping out the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies for the Houston Astros and the St. Louis Cardinals. But you'd get Cespedes and Cano potentially DHing. Silver lining in these new rules, potentially. Andy, what were you going to say? I was going to say, because I've been deep in on this whole thing this week, trying to figure out what they're going to do. And the problem that I see with the Florida one, it was sort of what Steve just mentioned. Like, if you're in Arizona and you're all on, a, and I understand Anthony's concerns about this, which is separate from what I'm about to say, but just logistically, if you're all quarantined in the same area, you can have some parity, relative parity in your schedule. I don't see how you could pretend you can play exhibitions in this Grapefruit League alignment, but I don't see how you can pretend that you can have a fair outcome with so many weird uh, matchups. Putting all the logistics aside and just saying how fun would it be, I think it'd be fun, especially because. The Mets lineup is basically an AL lineup, what they have on the bench mm-hmm. and the pieces they can put together. So it would actually be kind of fun to see. Okay, all right, I'll Andy. take nine. I'll buck nine. the trend. Um, what is your favorite Disney movie of all time? Uh, I, I found Moana to be surprisingly <laughs> moving. I really liked the pace of it. It was different. It was almost like a play where you had those two on the boat 
Is anyone else in this group? <laughs> Anthony, I know you have. Your children are older. Absolutely, yes. It's like, it's not your typical Disney movie. It's like, you, you've got the rock character and Moana just talking on this boat for a long time. And it's kind of interesting, the dialogue and some of the songs are good, so. Anthony? I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse the order and go with another trend and I'll take eight. Eight, um, if you were building a team and could only pick one Met to start your franchise, would you take Jacob deGrom or Pete Alonzo? I'm more of a, a pitching guy anyway. I, I really think you need that strong stud uh, arm at the top of the, you know, top of the rotation. So I'm gonna take Jacob, but it, I mean, Pete makes it really hard, especially with how young he is and the season he put together last year. Um, now I will say, if you gave me McNeil in this scenario, that might have made it a little harder. And I only say that because of what he's able to do at the top of the lineup and what he brings defensively. I've been thinking about DeGrom a lot, no matter what happens with this season, because what a unique set of circumstances he's gonna retire with pretty much no matter what. Like, we're gonna look back at these couple years and be like, wow, he won those Cy Youngs with almost no wins. Then he ends up getting the coronavirus season and that was shortened or whatever ends up happening. Such a unique set of circumstances for potentially a Hall of Fame bid down the line. Steve. Uh, I'm not going to keep going with this because I don't want to upset you, Doug. So I'm just going to throw a wrench right into the middle and go with five. So nobody can do the orders either way. Right right into your Yankees beat, just like last week. Um, <laughs> so no, wait, I said, I said That's six. I think I said nice. six. No, you, you get to answer five. I think you can handle it. Um, who should the Yankees make the biggest priority to keep past 2020? DJ LeMayhew, Masiro Tanaka, or James Paxton? I will go with Paxton simply because of the injuries that they've had to the starting rotation. That's that's right. I mean, listen, LeMayhew, I love LeMayhew, and I, I thought that was a great signing last year. Uh, I didn't know it would become the signing that it ended up becoming, but, you know, seeing him with the Rockies year in, year out, I just love the way he played. But when it, it comes to the Yankees pitching staff. I think they're they're always going to have enough offense, and you're going to need the arms. Give me four. Um, already. Oh no, hasn't been taken. Um, which former Major League Baseball player do you wish you could have seen play in person? I'd say Willie Mays because my personal favorite type of player is that speedy athletic type over the slugger I, I like to see a guy who can play defense who can run the bases and according to people who are who are fortunate enough to see him Willie Mays is the all-timer of that type of player so that's that's like the ideal I guess of the type of player that I enjoy watching I like the I, the mental image I have of this question being like okay I'd pick Babe Ruth and then go I'd go back and watch Babe Ruth play and then I'd come back to today and be like guys the guy stinks He'd have no shot against today's pitching. Okay, Anthony. I'll go with, let's go with seven. Seven. Um, have you eaten significantly more junk food over the past four weeks than you ever have before? No, if anything, I've been eating a little bit better just because I ha I'm making all my meals, um, you know, doing everything at home. The only reason I would say I'm eating a little bit of junk food is because I have kids and I have a pregnant wife. So it's in the house. There's nothing I can do about that. It's totally up to me. And I've been eating a lot of junk food. Like I was just <laughs> piling Doritos into my mouth last night. Okay, Steve, the last one. Would you rather have, this is number six, would you rather have three feet or three hands? Uh, I would rather have three hands, just right off the top of my head. It just feels like Why? you can always use an extra hand, right? Uh, what would you yeah. do with three feet? Like, Walk in I'm weird good, circles. Yeah, I'm good with my feet, but three hands, I feel like, you know, I could, if I'm on the air, I could simultaneously be, be holding a microphone while showing off some piece of, I don't know, anything, some piece of memorabilia I'm talking about. I mean, the only thing you could do with three feet is if someone attacked you, you could probably like stand up sturdier, you know, set yourself. Yeah, you yeah, have you more could, of like, a base. Yeah, like a tricycle. Yeah, like you could tripod. stand with your legs planted and then kick someone yeah, right. in your middle <laughs> leg. <laughs> this has been good. It's always good. Uh, Friday, living room edition of Baseball Night New York, three feet or three legs three arms, whatever edition. Uh, Andy Martino, Anthony Recker, Steve Gelbs. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.